since this video is the 100th video for getting posted on this channel I'm going to do something special I'm going to do in placing a row in a row minefield now before somebody starts flipping out stating that I'm giving away national security secrets to a potential enemy keep in mind this is a battle drill that has been around since World War II it really has not changed at all in 70 some years it's just the vehicles and the mines and the weapons carried by the troops that have changed the drill itself is the same we used to t say all the time that you could take a soldier from world war ii put him in modern times tell him what the task is and they'll be able to do it and you could take someone from the modern times send them back to world war ii they would be told what the battle drill is and they're going to know how to do it there is no changes on this all right, this is information that has been out there in the public for decades. Now, for, I do recommend that you read up on how to do this in FM 5-34 engineer field data. If you have any questions or you need uh, a little bit clarif better clarification because I didn't explain things well enough to you in your opinion. This is a uh, squad level battle drill of emplacing a row in the minefield. Emplacing a minefield is a platoon level drill. So each squad in the platoon has their tasks when putting in a minefield. I will try to do uh, another couple videos later today. One of those will be emplacing a minefield at the uh, platoon level what has to be done and potentially do a video on the different types of row minefields now when the task when the uh, squad is given the mission the squad leader does a deliberate risk assessment he goes through and he assesses any potential problems that could occur and he tries to mitigate those problems he takes into account that the vehicle is going to be transporting live fused but unarmed mines inside it over potentially rough terrain. He takes into account the proficiency of each person in the squad with handling mines. Because before this mission begins, each person must be proficient in handling the type of mine that's going to be put in that row. They must know the handling procedures, how to emplace that mine, how to disarm and remove that mine. If a person does not know those tasks, they must be trained on it until they are proficient with it before the mission begins. And even then, if they're still not fully comfortable, you're going to take that person, you're going to put them in a less complicated duty task as part of this mission such as digger the person that digs the holes for putting the mines in the ground if this is a buried mine u.s doctrine is and has been since at least the 90s that only the alpha row the very front row is buried the mines behind it are surface laid they're put on the surface they're not put in the ground but you still try to camouflage them with grass and leaves and that stuff so they're not out in the open. Now, this is a uh, nine-person battle drill. This goes back to the nine-man nine engineer squad. If you have a tenth person, I would put that tenth person up here as either one of the layers or a feeder. If you are just surface laying the mines, the diggers will not be here. They will be up at the vehicle helping out up here. And if it's there's a tenth person, your, your other person will be in additional armor. And those two will swap out or uh, leapfrog each other, arming the mines going down the row. They must always know where each other, where, where everyone is at before they arm the mine and move on. They do not get too far ahead. 
Now the squad gets the mission. The minefield is marked out. The rows are marked out with uh, flags or some other type of marker. This one, you always start from the right side of the minefield, meaning this is the front of the, mi of the minefield here. This is towards the enemy. So this is our right side. Our left side is our end point. We're going to be putting in our alpha row, our first row. So this would be alpha 1, and then the end point would be alpha 2. The squad goes to the mine dump, it picks up the mines for that row. For the alpha row, you need at least 42 anti-tank mines. Anti-personnel mines is a uh, slightly different battle drill. I might do a uh, video on that sometime later this week. Because I have not done that particular task in over 20 years and I definitely need to uh, review it. Now, they go to the mine dump, they pick up the mines, they lay them out in the back of the vehicle, they stack them too high. No more than that, no third or fourth mine on top of it. It is too high in the back of the vehicle, in the back of the trailer. Now, if you can't fit them all in there, well, just be super careful if you do place a third mine on top of there but you're only supposed to go too high in the back of the vehicle because you need to realize these mines are fused the mines were installed at the mine dump but they were not armed yet but they pick up the mines they put them in the back of the vehicle or the back of the trailer the squad leader gets a sandbag at the mine dump inside that sandbag is all the arming wrenches, clips, and safety pins for those mines that are being picked up. The armor should be given an arming wrench at the mine dump for that type of landmine. Each landmine has a different type of arming wrench. It's not the same wrench for each mine. He should uh, hang on to that. If he's not given an arming wrench at the mine dump, the squad leader will take one wrench out of the sandbag and pass it to the soldier that's going to be the armor. And then that soldier hangs on to that wrench. The squad then goes up to their beginning roll marker. Typically what we did was a bicycle flag. We get to that point, the vehicle pulls up alongside, aligns himself up with the other flags that are in that row. How many flags are in there is really dependent on the person laying it out. Uh, you could potentially only see three or four flags in that row. But keep in mind, these rows are 250 meters long. So if it's a lot of rolling terrain, you're going to have to put in more flags. If it's flat, open, there's no vegetation like in a desert, you can probably get away with the three or four flags. But you get up to the position where the start of the marker is, your Alpha 1. Vehicle pulls up, you attach on the back of the vehicle your 6 meter rope. Now what that means is, from the very back of the vehicle, its attachment point, to the sandbag, there's six meters of rope in there, and you du you double check it. When you're up here, you pull out your uh, tape measure, you tie this off on the back of the vehicle if you didn't already do it already. I'd recommend doing it at the mine dump so you're ready to go, so as soon as you get up here, you start dropping mines on the ground. But if you haven't done it already, you tie it off on the vehicle, make sure you got exactly six meters between the, the sandbag and the back of the vehicle where it's attached. The vehicle pulls ahead till the rope is taut. The sandbag gets put down right next to the marker. A mine is brought back, put right next to the sandbag. Typically you'll do it behind the sandbag like this and then that flag gets pulled. 
Now on your layer team, you're going to have your driver, your TC or VC, your tank commander or vehicle commander, who will be doing overwatch. They'll be doing security, so the crew served weapon on the vehicle should be facing the enemy, pointed in the enemy direction. If there is not a weapon mounted on the vehicle, they should be given some type of uh, squad automatic weapon or belt fed machine gun and he will be in charge of that during the mission. The TC will keep watch as to what's going on back here and then passing instructions to the driver telling the driver if they need to speed up or slow down or stop. You will have one person in the back of the vehicle or the back of the trailer with the mines. That is the feeder. They are in charge of the mines that are back there. Directly behind the vehicle, you will have a person that is the layer. It should be on the same side that of the rope that the mines are getting laid on. I just had to write it on this side because of uh, space. Back at the sandbag, you will have a team leader. That team leader lets the layer know when to drop the mine on the ground. At least 25 meters back, so at least four mines back from the team leader, you have your arming team. You'll have one or two diggers and one armor. The diggers should always be at least one mine ahead of the armor, so there should be at least one unarmed mine between the digger and the armor. The squad leader is in charge of the overall mission but spends most of his time back here with the arming team making sure everything's being done safely and correctly. Now just uh, some quick notes here. Important measurements to know. It is six meters between anti-tank mines there is 25 meters separation between the laying team and the arming team. Each mine row is 250 meters in length. And the position for the sandbag with the wrenches, pins, and clips is 30 centimeters from that start point, that um, start row marker. So 30 centimeters from that, a hole is dug. The sandbag that the squad leader was given is put in the hole and it is buried. Now, once everything starts, the vehicle starts going forward. Whenever the sandbag pulls up next to the mine that's already been put on the ground, the team leader yells out drop. The layer then drops the mine on the ground right at the, behind the vehicle. So there's six meters between each mine. This must be hyper accurate. The feeder then passes the layer another mine and then they just keep going. It's just drop, 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 drop and the mines just keep getting laid on the ground. Behind them, the diggers dig the hole for the mine. If it's to be buried, they keep a small pile of dirt next to the hole for putting over the mine along with any sod or leaves and grass for camouflaging the hole. The excess dirt gets flung out across the, across the field so that it's not uh, easily noticed. You're not going to leave little piles of dirt right next to where each mine is. The arbor comes up to the mine, puts it in the hole, arms it covers it with dirt and then camouflages it with either the sod or the grass or the leaves or sand depending on where you're at and you just keep going all the way through now as you get to your mid row markers the driver typically will run them over run them underneath the track or underneath the tires the team leader will pick that up and carry it with them as he's going along. Once they get to the end, the last mine is laid, the sandbag is pulled in, 
those flags and markers are passed off to inside the vehicle. They wait at the end while the arming team catches up. Once they're caught up, they all mount up, they head out. And then they go on to either pick up the mines for the next row that they're going to lay or whatever job they're given in the uh, <laughs> platoon task of emplacing the minefield. But uh, typically you'll have one, maybe two squads in placing rows in the minefield at any given time and you'll have one squad that will be doing the uh, frat fence around it, the fratricide fence, the wire fence around it to protect friendly troops from going into the minefield. And we'll cover that in the uh, platoon level drill. Now this is for a uh, straight row. This is not for a lazy W or for the IOE. There is slight variations on this battle drill for that and I'll try to cover that in the uh, platoon level tasks. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember Essayance.